So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install our casing legs, which easy enough. Here's what, what I was asking earlier. Do you guys start with your head or do you start with your sill? So do you pre-cut your heads ahead of time? Do you start your stool, your sill, stool, whatever it is, apron, and then work up and then cut your heads? Is that how you do it? Because I don't. What I do is I go through and I measure all the windows in a house, or a lot of times what we'll do is we'll order windows for a project, and before the windows even are delivered to our shop, we've pre-assembled, we've pre-built all of the components, all the trim. The windows aren't even there. We're already, we have this faith that the windows are going to fit and that our trim's going to fit. You must have pretty good windows. They are pretty good windows. Point is, is that here's what I do. How do we get this dimension? Well, it's real easy right now because we got references to measure off of. I can measure from here to here, take that dimension, add my overhang. Remember, we're not going to butt cut this. Can I borrow that for a minute? Yeah. We're not going to take this and just flush it up here and call it good. That's really not good. You want an overhang, you want a projection, you want another shadow line there. So how do you get that dimension? What I normally do is I take the inside dimension of the window and I note that. And then I go back and I lay out all my other components and all my other reveals. And what, where my reveals are, here's what it's going to look like. I got a quarter inch reveal or a shoulder here. I got a quarter inch reveal or shoulder here. I got a three and a half inch wide casing here. I got another half inch projection here times two. And I take that and I put it on a gauge block. Remember I just talked about my reveals. Here's four times my reveal, right here. Here's my casing, here's my casing. One left, one right. Here's two times my overhang for the casing, left and right. And then all I need to do, let's say I got a window that's, doesn't matter, 23 and 3 16 of an inch. All I need to do is go to 23 and 3 16 of an inch, slide my let me do this so you guys can see it. 23 and 3 16 of an inch, slide my block, the end of my block up to that, and then measure there. And there's the length of my head. That's it. Alternatively, gonna... what I'll do a lot of times is I'll find out what that measurement is, and then I just come over and I'll hold my tape at <clears throat> seven and a half or nine and a half, what it is over here, and then take my measurement, and that gives me my overall yep. distance. Exactly. So let me back up. So he, the question was, so we've got a piece of five quarter, and we'll talk about this pack out in a minute. I'm not gonna go there yet, but we're gonna talk about the five quarter. So he was saying, we've got typically a piece of five quarter, maybe we've got three quarter here. So we've got like a quarter inch shoulder, right? So what you're asking, if I'm not mistaken, is are we not gonna take that and bring it around? Not necessarily, because what I, I tend to do is I tend to study historic details, but this would be more of a craftsman style casing, and they often didn't just do a quarter inch. This would be a quarter inch extension or projection beyond the plane of the casing. It wasn't always necessarily a quarter inch projection, excuse me, it was a quarter inch projection beyond the plane of the face of the casing. It was almost rare, it rarely was a quarter inch projection beyond the end of the casing. Does that make sense? It was often a half to an inch, half an inch to an inch. And really this it comes varied. into the style also that you're working to because if you start mm -hmm. going into like a New England kind of cottage vernacular, it's gonna be smaller on the end projections. Uh, I've right. seen a lot of older homes where it's actually flush, so it'll have a five-quarter head like that, and it'll be flush on the ends. Right. It's, it all depends on what you're working on. And this is really difficult. Let me tell you right now, this is difficult because what's going to happen is this joint in here is going to open up more than likely, unless you can actually reinforce it. This is going to be a problem down the road. If it, especially if it's painted, because you're going to have materials that are expanding and contracting at slightly different rates in many cases, and it's going to show as a crack through the paint. That's why that's, shadows that, and projection. That's character and charm it's in New England. You charge extra for character yeah, and charm. It's far more. Right. So that's our approach. Okay. So a couple other things going on here. Now, we talked about the fact that you have to use a jam extension in this application because we need to be able to land our casing solidly on the beadboard here. But here, what do we do? Here we have to add thickness because while it's flush here, we've got to add a jam extension here. And I'm going to take this off and show it to you. You can see the jam extension that now the jam extension on the window is obviously attached to the jam, but we need jam extension or pack out, if you will, on this edge as well to keep this in plane. So a couple things here. First off, if you have to do this, and I, this is what we always ask is, is there a better way to this? This is how we do it. We will typically glue and pin nail this strip on there. 
I'm really reluctant to do this with paint grade work because it's been my experience, similar to the detail we just talked about with that head, that this is going to open up just a hair. And if it's painted white, and even if it opens a hunt that 128th of an inch, it'll end up just as a crack. It'll show as a crack, right there. and it looks terrible. So very often what we'll do when we're faced with these situations is we'll go ahead and we'll use this type of casing, but then we'll add a back band to it. Everyone knows what a back band is. So the edge of the back band wraps around and lands on the wall. And if we have to custom make it so we get a deeper leg to accommodate that pack out, we'll do that. And then this becomes nothing more than a shim. And in some cases, we don't even actually, we'll float it within reason, depending. Uh, alternatively, depending. depending on what it is now, a lot of times I skip doing that now and I'll use uh, the PVC trim screws that have the reverse thread at the head of them. If you run those in, it allows you to actually dial that piece of material in and out while it's solidly fastened. And I'll dial it out so that my reveals are even, and then I'll just come in and if need be, I'll use back or rod or a sealant joint right down here and let that be handled by the painters. Yep. So uh, I'd rather see a little bit of a sealant joint there than a crack later. Right. And you can paint that to the color of the wall if you want or yeah. whatever. There's, some, there's no real hard and fast rule, I don't think. Here's another place that is going to become a potential challenge for you. And this is that same head casing or the cap or whatever you want to call it shown on the flat. But now here's our pack out or build up on the top. You're probably not going to really see that if, unless it's on the first floor and you've got a staircase or something looking down on that. But this becomes a real challenge. This is where self returns will save you. Here I just took an attack and I should have done both, but I'm showing only this pack out here. Here I've taken and we've got end grain showing here, which depending on the project, end grain is not necessarily a bad thing. There's, you know, it used to be that don't, you should never see end grain on if a fish it's properly carpet. prepped and painted. It's right. really not an issue. And it depends on the style, too. I mean, in the arts and crafts movement, you see a lot of end grain. They kind of accented it. But here in this application, we have end grain, and then we've got edge grain for our pack out. So if I had simply done this and cut, and let me do this so it's actually, it actually looks presentable. If I had simply taken this and cut a miter on this, like so, I could have done a self-return and I could have hidden all of that and I could have made the self-return longer than the thickness of the material I'm working with. I could have made it a quarter inch longer to accommodate for this. So again, plan ahead, but this is something that, that really works well to, to hide all of that. You probably can't get away from this, but you can get away from this. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So self-returns are really cool. Self-returns really kind of give your project that finished look. Yeah, thank you.